we need to trace out the heart block template here. So I just began a little bit on this fusible. I'm using, in this case, this stuff called Quilt Top Express, but it's basically just a fusible that has one side that has the little adhesive nubby side of it. This side is the smooth side. Doesn't really matter which side you mark on, by the way. So, just mark the rest of that side there. There. And you can really mark that with any marker. This one's a friction marker that's iron away. Since this is something that will be fused later, the iron away part doesn't actually matter. And so now I just go through and I just cut it out. There we go. It's a little awkward to cut out, but we're getting there. Okay. Now we have our piece cut out of the fusible. Smooth side. This is the bumpy side. This has got the adhesive. So, we're at the sewing point, the, f the first sewing point that is, for doing the heart applique that has the fusible. So, I'm gonna end up coming up with something that looks like that. So, first thing is, is I like to go ahead and just do a little snip. Just do a little snip right into there and that way it's just ready to go so that I can get that turned and then that's going to be my piece that I cut out before and let's see I'm feeling around like that feels smooth yeah that's the uh, adhesive side we want the adhesive side which in this case is going to be kind of like our, our right side I guess against our right side here these two pieces are together and then just going to go tracing around the perimeter here. little curves really slow things down good that way and we're just gonna cut all of that away and then what we want to do is we want to get these pieces turned so we're gonna just drag these out. Just that's the preliminary bit there. Okay. And can do it to this one. Right here. There we go. And that's this is my background piece that I'm putting the little blue circle fabric onto. Kind of a blue, sort of a teal, I guess. So, it's one of those blues that's not a purely, well, it's not a pure blue, kind of a mixture. And then I'm just using scissors. You know, you can use like a chopstick or something. 
crispy scissors, you know, it's pretty blunt on the end. I wouldn't recommend using something super sharp. But we're just going through. And you know, a lot of times when I turn something, like if I'm making a uh, pot holder or something, then, you know, or, or uh, the face masks that are so popular <laughs> that we're all making because we have to wear them so we can do shopping. And actually I can kind of feel here I would have probably wanted to do a little bit of trimming because that is kind of laying a little not the greatest. But, you know, just kind of smoothing it. Since I haven't gone as far with this one, I'm going to go ahead and just do some real quick strategic little trims. Much like I did on the style of applique where it was utilizing the starch. Actually, for this, I think I'll use this little trimmer. Or maybe not, I don't know. Uh, it's working. It's working. Not that bad. And with this, I don't have to do as many little trims to it because it's not like I'm trying to get this to iron real nice and smooth around a curve like in the one applique video where it uses the starch. So there we go. I already feel like this is laying out better quite frankly. So this already feels like it's cooperating a lot better. So, yeah, yeah, like the difference of that, but it's just the difference of that and as opposed to not trimming things, so off camera I'll go through and reverse that and trim it, but that, you know, and there's, there can be little bits, like this is kind of a little bit of a point here, so you could take like a little stick pen and just kind of tuck those out. That's something that I will frequently do just kind of as a refining thing whenever I'm turning a piece. You could use like a fingernail. I have like a little wood roller that I can kind of do a little bit more smashing like that. Fingernail works great too. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've turned our hearts that we're going to applique. We've turned them, and they look pretty good. And I'm going to pair this one up with this one, and I'm going to pair this one up with this one. So, just like with other methods, I want to try to center that heart. So we're going to do that. So I got that like that. And then I'm just going to eyeball it. You know, that looks pretty good. Okay. And then it's just pressing that down for about 15, 20 seconds. Should be pretty good. Okay, I'm able to cover the whole heart with the iron, so that's good. Nice thing about my iron is at 30 seconds it'll do a flashing light. So that's definitely enough. Okay. So, yep, that is really nice and secure there. And then I'll just go ahead and quickly do this one. Let's get that little centering press mark. We're just gonna gently put that on there. Okay, and we're just gonna hold that in place. While we're waiting for that, this is a great time that if you like the content, please subscribe and please put a like on the video. That really helps me out. I'd love to hear any comments about what sorts of projects you might be working on. Maybe you're working on a heart project for Valentine's Day, so here you go. Look at that, see? That's on there real nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch on these blocks where I used the fusible 
This machine is a single hole plate. It can only do straight stitch. My other machine can actually do like blanket stitches, zigzag stitches. A lot of people like to attach their applique using a blanket stitch or a zigzag stitch. I'm just doing it with the straight stitch on this machine here. Works just fine for my needs. Oh, and by the way, I like to stabilize with paper. So let me add that paper. Take my glasses off for that. Does anybody else find they have to take their glasses off just to do a little bit of sewing? <laughs> All right. this to do, I would put on my knee lift that I have for this machine. Um, it's really cool. It's a, it's a bar that plugs into the machine and it basically raises the presser foot up and down so that I don't have to keep doing this all the time. there and just trimming that real quick. So as you can see there it's got pretty nice little perimeter stitch there. That's a really nice looking block if I may say so myself. That'll make somebody happy brighten their day. And this is just easy, just rip off the paper. And then this kind of tug. And then that just comes right up. No residue, no problem. Mm -hmm.